thank you to all the candidates. We will now move on to our main topic of and move into some of the environmental issues. I did want to remind all of the um, members of the audience that you can submit a question to um, Dave or John if you just sort of fold it up or pass it to the end of the aisle. There are no cards by both of the doors and pens if you'd like to write a question down. Thank you. And so now for our first question from the co-sponsoring organizations. What would be your highest environmental priority if elected to city council? And we're going to start with uh, Mr. Ferrugio. One of my priorities when elected to city council would be to address the pollution in our creeks and rivers caused by runoff and water infiltration into our sewer system. I'm sure you know water infiltration into our sewer system is a huge problem where we're paying the process for the water that doesn't need to be processed. The water often ends up overflowing our sewage treatment plant, running raw sewage into our creeks and rivers, and directly into the Chesapeake Bay and the wildlife and food source that it provides for the entire East Coast. This was caused by 30 years of ignored maintenance to our systems, which necessitated the need for a newly instituted rain tax, which is the admission of 30 years of council neglect of our infrastructure. Seeing this neglect on our infrastructure is part and parcel of what prompted me to run for city council. As elected officials, it is our responsibility to properly manage our assets, to look out for our people and their quality of life, which includes the environment. As a police officer on patrol, I remember calling into the city yard by radio for 20 years ago, maintenance needs that went unfixed year after year. As a planning commissioner, I was involved in ways where we protected our streams with buffers, and I proudly remember the satisfaction of the planning and inclusion of bio swells in water treatment for our for our projects that we did. I promise if elected, I'll fight to ensure City Council does its job protecting our environment. Thank you. Mr. Fenwick, you have one and a half minutes. Uh, before you all leave here tonight, I'd like you to take a minute and read, those, read that vision statement that's up on the wall there. Because it's very important, not only for the environment, but for everything else the City Council does. I would make sure, if you trust me with your vote, <coughs> that the environmental policy would play a part in every capital improvement project that comes before me or any decision of any import. It's that important. I would also use a platform, even if you don't trust me with your vote, I would still use it, to make sure people understand that environmentalism is economically fruitful for the city. If you think about it, the biggest transfer of people and wealth in our country's history was because of environmentalism. And I'm talking about people coming down from the Northeast, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, uh, places like that where the city's water was foul, where the air was bad, where the infrastructure was crumbling, and they flocked to the Southeast and the South a little bit to California, where the air was cleaner, the water was better. That was a drawing point for those localities to bring new businesses and new people into their communities. That's the importance of environmentalism. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Benwick. Mr. Grady, on your highest environmental priority. Uh, my highest environmental priority is twofold. As uh, Mr. Benwick said, read the vision statement. I'm going to read the uh, Charleston vision uh, for the for Green City 2025, where we see ourselves about 12 years from now. Charleston citizens live in a community with a vibrant, urban, forest, tree line, with streets, and lush green neighborhoods. We have extensive natural trail system, along with healthy rivers and streams. We have clean air and water. We emphasize recycling and reuse. We minimize stormwater water runoff. Our homes and buildings are sustainably designed and energy efficient. My first thing I would do priority-wise is education and awareness of the current state of our environment as a city. We need to continue uh, to encourage the use of solar panels, the purchase of uh, energy efficient vehicles for the city and individuals, and the use of green rooftops uh, on new and existing buildings. Examples of the solar panels placed on the Main Street Arena. Uh, also, the police department has a green uh, roof, and right now as we speak, city, city Hall has a green roof as well. We can do that immediately to encourage more green roofs, solar panels, uh, energy efficient vehicles. So we want to priority is to try to continue the vision of Charlottesville Council. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lees. 
can think of a few major issues that the city could stand to look with, but <clears throat> having walked through Fry Spring, Belmont, and talking to the people who live there, there's one thing that they all say straight off the bat, what needs to be done is get a pain on these developers. And that resonates with me. Where I grew up with Southeast Florida in the middle of the building boom, when that recession hit in 2006, and it hit us a lot earlier, all of a sudden you had units completely vacate, vacated that were now drawing, overdrawing the infrastructure, but looked horrible and were devastating to the environment. Saltwater intrusions only gotten worse in Florida. I don't want to see that happen to Charlottesville. Runaway development completely taking away a city's promise. And such as it were, and especially with the new stormwater's utilities fee, we need to start incorporating greener design elements into planning guidelines. No building houses right on top of each other so they can flood each other's lot. No letting development sites fill up with all kinds of rusted nails and, and garbage. Start and, and start in a program, investigate a program to help bring our, especially the historic buildings, to be more environmentally friendly. This is a major challenge financially for homeowners of these buildings. I live in a house, for instance, where it costs $10,000 to replace one window with energy efficient windows. Incorporating greener design elements into our planning process. That's a way we can start to make this city green. Thank you, Mr. Lees. Ms. Safis. Thank you. Um, so there are a lot of important initiatives that we're already working on. Um, improved infrastructure for bike, pedestrian, and transit travel. And 21st century tools like travel smart, transportation demand management, and bike share to get folks out of their cars. Green building practices and hybrid and electric cars for city departments. Expanded recycling and potential curbside composting. Implementation of the stormwater utility fee to provide incentives to encourage responsible on-site runoff management. Renovations of existing housing to increase energy efficiency with support of renovations for low-income homeowners. Encouragement of residential density and mixed-use development to slow down rural development support urban transit and reduce commute times, economic development to create more jobs in the city so people can get to them without cars, even paperless city council and planning commission meetings, an initiative I started that has saved hundreds of pounds of paper. But I have to say that my highest priority is affordable housing. By enabling more workers in the city to be able to afford to live in the city will reduce the number of commuters and the automobile miles driven on our roads. Combined with residential density and appropriate areas and mixed-use development, Increased affordable housing in Charlottesville will reduce the need for new roads, reduce air pollution, and improve the quality of life for many people in our community. Thank you, Ms. Sakis. And Mr. Weber, on your highest <coughs> environmental priority in the left Thank city you. Council. My highest priority is to ensure that the money that's collected from the rain tax is actually used to reduce the pollutants in the water that enters the watershed to the Chesapeake Bay. I attended the public hearing on January 22nd, and I listened patiently to what everyone had to say and there was almost nothing I disagreed with uh, except what I found missing in the documents was an actual metric that said here's the pollution that's going in and in the end we're going to measure it we're going to show that there's some performance. I challenged council to establish that metric. Our priority is clean water, not to create new jobs that accomplish nothing or a new slush fund for other city council adventures. In 2006 I penned an editorial criticizing the unsustainable growth in taxes and spending by the city government. Between 1996 and 2005, they had collected over $42 million in surplus revenues with less than a transparent audit trail. Let's be clear, this new tax is only necessary because of years of neglect and the failure of city council to invest in the necessary upgrades to our stormwater system. Money is fungible, people will forget, and city council will blow with the political winds du jour. I won't. I will demand accountability and focus laser-like on performance. Cleaner water is the goal, and cleaner water you will get. Thank you. Now for our second question from the people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Damn, people stop. <laughs> it's okay. I'm ready whenever you are. All right, on me. So after being forgotten about, I'm here. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to instill a sense of pride within our community. I think that's the biggest thing that has to happen throughout the communities throughout the city. That's from our lowest income communities, from our middle class income communities, into our more affluent neighborhoods. We all have to have a sense of pride and we all have to know without a shadow of a doubt that this is our community. From the smallest kid who's just walking to school to the high schooler who is uh, riding around because he just got a new car during his lunch break. 
to the parent who has to come and pick up their kids, or to the people who are actually traveling and commuting in and out of our town. We all have to know that this is our community. We all have a responsibility to it, and we all must ensure that this is the best place to live. And also, my answer is kind of twofold. One of the other things that I would really like to do is improve our bike system. I would like to actually put in more bike lanes, and here's a reason why. There's a, there's a few benefits. Uh, the environmental hazards of motorized vehicle traffic are no secret. And according to the University of North Carolina Highway Safety Research Center, transportation emits large amounts of pollutants into the atmosphere. The university's research found that 80%, 80% of the carbon monoxide in the atmosphere came from motorized vehicles. Well, here's something that we can do. Riding a bike, however, contributes zero pollutants. And that's a, st a statistic that is definitely a pro for the environment. Furthermore, it also burns no non-renewable fuels. So no non no, excuse me, no non-renewable fuels will be burned. And that same study also found that motorized Thank you, Mr. vehicles. Oh, man. Come on,